Okay, today we're going to go over how to trick out a crazy cart with LED strip light. So what I've done for one of my daughters on her crazy cart is I've put blue LED strip lights all the way around. I've attached them on some wood trim, half inch wide wood trim, and wired it up with a 24 volt to 12 volt DC to DC converter to power them. These are 12 volt LED lights. And then I'll put a little power switch right here. You flip them on and now you can see them. I'm gonna turn the lights, or close the garage door so you can see them a little bit better, but they really pop at night. And so for my other daughter, what I'm gonna do is she wants some yellow mixed in with the blue. So I'm gonna put some yellow LED strips on it too. Here you'll see as it gets darker in the garage, what the effect is. So hopefully you can see that pretty clear. And I've got some video of the kids riding around with them too. So let's get started. Here's a diagram of all the LED links and the wiring links that we need to put together to go around the crazy cart. So basically it's a bunch of seven inch strips of the LED ribbon, one 14 inch strip of the LED ribbon on the back. And then for the wood backers, on the five pieces that go around the, the seat, we need to add an eight inch on each end for the wood strip. So we'll end up with four wood strips, nine inches long, and then one wood strip, 16 inches long. And on those, we'll drill an eighth inch hole roughly on the end of each wood strip to run the wire through, and that just helps support and keep the LED strip attached to the wood. The wire I'm using is uh, 22 gauge, two conductor wire, bought it off of the internet, pretty cheap. We only need a few feet of it, but it comes in roughly 10 or 20 foot bundles. So any wire like this will work. I like the two conductor because it just looks cleaner when you're running around the crazy cart. All right, first step is we've got to cut six strips that are seven inches long. So this is a blue LED. I just bought it off the internet. It's a lot cheaper than going to one of the big box stores. So it doesn't have to be exact on the length, but about seven inches. So the way these are set up is you have to cut them where they've got the dual terminals, at least on these LEDs. So they're pretty easy to cut. You can use wire cutters or I just use a razor blade to cut them. Okay, once we've got all the LED strips cut, the next part is I used waterproof LED, which I recommend. Um, is to strip off this clear plastic covering on the LEDs so you can actually solder your wires to these two contact pads. So the easiest way to do it, and there's good videos on YouTube on how to do it, is use a very sharp razor blade. So don't once you've used it for a little bit, you might want to swap it out with a new one. And then you just cut down hard, push down, and just scrape. And you see this little piece of plastic that came off scrapes off pretty clean with a new razor blade and then you just scrape until you can see these pads you see how this one shows you can kind of see the scratch marks from the razor blade on it that's how you know you get all the plastic off of it okay i've got all my strips cut as you can see i've got the plastic stripped off i don't know if you can see that or not now the hardest part about all this is these led strips aren't labeled positive negative. So what I've got is a little uh, 12 volt power supply. I just got a watt meter on it. We really don't need it. And then I'll just double check because I, I like to use, you know, red positive, black negative as I string them all together. So what I'll do is I will just hook them up real quick. Yep, there we go. If you hook it up reverse polarity, um, LEDs won't come on. So Figure out a way to test it, a 12 volt battery, even a six volt battery, just doing it quickly would probably work. So just go through and do that, and then I'll make a little pin mark on it to indicate which one's negative. Okay, first step I do is I will pre tin the pads. I don't be worried too shy with these. They're pretty, it's pretty tough plastic. So just put a little solder on each one. That one didn't do too well. There you go. Then I'll do the same with the wiring. Just a little bit of solder. 
doesn't take much. And then I just come in, and what I will do is I will not be shy. You just push down, and I push down with that soldering iron. Make sure I got good contact. Uh, a little bit of a, do it where you can see it better. Okay, we got that one. And I'll do the same here. Hopefully you can see that. And there you go. It's one good solder. Don't be shy with this. When you're testing it, it should be pretty solid. Once I do the soldering, what I'll do is I'll take a piece of quarter inch heat shrink tubing, cut it about a half inch in length, peel off a little bit of that adhesive cover where I've got that and then I will do a little heat shrink and some people are fancier than I am they have actually a heat shrink gun which looks like a big blow dryer I'm not that not that fancy so I just heat shrink that on kind of do it till it sweats that really protects that joint plus it keeps it from shorting out if something happens to hit it that the kids are playing with. So now I'll just take this, I've already soldered this on. I'll put the heat shrink tubing on here, another extra piece here, solder them together, and then I'll just keep on daisy chaining these together. Positive to positive, negative to negative. Okay, here's the wood trim we're gonna use to mount the LEDs on. It's basically a little over a half inch strip very thin, like a 1 8 inch by a half inch wood trim stripping. And we're just going to cut four pieces that are 9 inches long, and then one piece will be 16 inches long. So there's not a lot of magic to it. And then we're going to drill an eighth inch hole, or a hole big enough to put your wire through on the end of each one of these strips. So there'll be two holes in each strip. Okay, once we're on to the third LED strip, now we've got to, before we solder it, run the wire through the wood, or through the hole in the wood, and then we'll solder the strip, and we'll mount it here, and then we'll run the back piece of the wire through the other hole, going to the next LED strip. Okay, so here what I'm doing is I'm just gonna run this wire through the holes, get my shrinkable plastic tubing. Now we are ready to do the soldering. Okay, so here's what it looks like. So I come through the hole. I haven't shrunk that. Soldered my other strip. Got my shrinkable tubing. I'm soldered there through this hole. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shrink that down and then pull the adhesive backing protect paper off and we'll just go ahead and glue it on this strip of wood. Okay, here's the finished piece. Now I did cheat. I had my heat shrink too long so I just redid that, cut it off and put some new pieces on it because it was going down over the holes and I couldn't pull this tight. But you can see I'll pull this real tight. I've got the adhesive backing off so now it's very solid and it's ready to hot melt glue onto the crazy cart. If you want to get fancy, you can paint this backing. I'm not going to put that much effort into it to paint it black or whatever color. Okay, here we are after everything's soldered together on their wood strips. So these two will go on the steering column. Front side, back side, the back, uh, side back, and then the other side up in the front. So we're pulling right at one amp, roughly a little less. So what I'm going with is a 24 volt to 12 volt DC to DC converter. There you go. Got it off of the internet. 1.5 amps max, so we're well within its limits. Also, I do fuse it. Here's the electrical diagram for putting 12 volt LED strips onto the crazy cart. Crazy carts use two 12 volt batteries in series to provide 24 volts for their drive motor. So what I do is I run it through a fuse, 
a switch, and then a DC to DC converter to take it from 24 volt to 12 volt. Um, that then feeds the LED strips. You don't want to tie into one of the batteries, which is 12 volts, and pull power off of it while not discharging the other battery because that'll give you a voltage imbalance and when you go to recharge the batteries it will dramatically shorten the lifespan over uh, for your crazy cart batteries. Okay now that we've got the LED string put together the next step is actually getting it into the crazy cart. So there's no easy way about it you're going to have to pull off both plastic pieces so undo all these screws on this side and that side to get to the battery and the wiring so that we can run what we need to do. There you go, take that side off, side off and set those aside. Next step will be taking this bolt out. We got to get to where we can access the batteries. Now I replaced these batteries, I don't know, six, eight months ago. Um, so we're going, so the wiring might look a little bit different, but undo this wing nut. Just remember that piece goes there because it's going to fall through once you loosen it up a little bit. That's okay. Just make sure not to lose it because we got to put it back together. And then we'll need an Allen wrench to pull this one all the way out. Go. Might be a little hard at first to get it started, but once you get it going, it comes off pretty easy. Alright, once you get the Allen screw out, now it's just a matter of pulling this bar out. And the holder's got the padding on it. And then we can access these batteries. Don't get too rough with them. They connect it pretty well, they're pretty tight fit. Okay, here we are with the batteries pulled apart. I actually had this contact pop off. It's one I'd soldered on way back when I replaced these batteries. No big deal. Um, they'll have some silicone. You can peel it off with your finger. This is one. I replaced these batteries, so this is my silicone job. Just to, It acts as an insulator when you put the batteries back in. This is a fuse um, for the batteries to protect the speed controller in the motor. We're not worried about it. what we're going to do is solder in so that we've got um, the negative for 24 volt going to uh, the positive terminal we're going to make that circuit with our dc to dc controller and step it down to 12 volts to run our lights here's the power switch it's um, Pretty simple. There's no real current one amp, so we're doing 12 volts, so a lot of switches will work. I just grabbed this one off the shelf at my local fries, and we're going to mount it in the left side. We're going to drill a quarter inch hole about right here and mount it. Right there should work. So the circuit's going to be going from the 24 volts that's feeding the system. So we've got a positive lead here. And then the negative, these batteries are connected in series, will be the ground for the LED strip. So we'll have 24 volts feeding into that to go 12 volts. The reason you don't want to, you could theoretically take one of the 12 volt batteries and tap off of that for the LEDs. You would need this device. But what will happen is you'll drain one battery faster than the other they'll charge in properly and you'll end up with a very short lifespan on these batteries. So you don't want to do that. You always want to put the same load across both batteries. So this thing wasn't $10 on Amazon. It's, it's money well spent. Uh, one thing to say now is I use an 80 watt soldering iron. I learned this when I replaced the batteries. So one of these, I went out and bought this. It's a Weller 80 watt and it does a job. Um, a standard 30 watt soldering iron wasn't hot enough to melt the solder on those tabs. They use a, a higher melting temperature solder at the Crazy Cart factory. So the circuit's gonna be negative to the negative on the charge controller, and then negative to the LEDs, positive 
I'm tying in this fuse and I'm using a, actually a two and a half amp. I thought I used a four amp, but it's a two and a half amp. So I'm tying in here. This will go to the switch right here on that body that we just installed. And then from the switch, it will go to the positive on the controller. And then from the controller or the regulator, it will go to the LED strip. So we won't have any power going to this unless we flip that switch on to turn the LEDs yes, on. Try not to lose a joint that I just did, so I might try the back side here. All right, now that we've got our negative wire attached and our positive, we're going to put the batteries in, and then we'll try to get some electrical tape over these two exposed uh, contacts. It's a little tricky putting these batteries in so what I've found is cut most of the wire ties that they have for the factory on all these connectors and then just try to slide one in this back one you got to watch there's not a lot of room so I try to get that one situated first he's got to go pretty far back and you got to work with these uh, contact these clips to get them between the frame and the battery and then on top of the battery. There's this little foam pad at the bottom to, to help keep things from skidding. Of course that makes it a lot harder to stall. So you've got your back on the back side. I know how far I need to go because of the holes for this piece here. be a little tight. You kind of have to jiggle and both batteries need to touch each other. It can't be a wire in between them. Okay, I think we're pretty good right there. You got to watch the sharp edge on this fin because it caught my thumb a little while ago. So then you have this bracket. We'll put it back in. Slides, make sure you get the pad on the bottom of the battery. And see how this hole comes out past the battery. Now all we have to do is that there. I have to set this down. I just have the wing rim. It's just a wing nut that goes on there. So I'm going to have to set this down. And we'll tighten that up. Okay, that's good enough. Keep that wing nut a little loose. And then we'll need to line this up. in there get it started there you go next step is I just want to put a little I'm gonna put some electrical tape just to cover up this joint and that joint these batteries aren't going anywhere I'm gonna have this come over that way but just in case something uh, we don't want to make a short across that now what we need to do is run the positive to the switch and what you want to do is give yourself about 18 inches of wire so when you pull this side off you can get it out of the way to do some work with it. So I'm going to solder about an 18 inch lead from here to the switch. Okay, I've got this wiring around. So I got positive coming up. I got it soldered here with heat shrink tubing. You don't want to leave that joint exposed. Comes up to my switch. I got heat shrink tubing to protect this. And then this will be my positive power feed over to my DC to DC converter, which I'm just going to hot glue right up in this wheel well and that will feed my LED strips. Okay, what we plan on doing with this converter or is mounting it right there so that both side, plastic sides can go on. So we're just gonna hot melt glue it. So the easiest way to make sure your glue works good is just scratch it a little bit with sandpaper. You don't have to take all the paint off. That's plenty. No one sees that, but now you have a rough surface. And then we'll use that, and I'll do the same thing on the back side of this converter. And then we're going to put a little hot melt glue and glue it on. Okay, so what we'll do is, remember it's going like that. Got to make sure we got clearance on both sides. you got to twist it. And then we'll just hit it with 
plenty of glue mash it looks like we're in good shape right there and then we just hold it okay now we just have to finish up the wiring going over to the DC to DC converter so our wiring's gonna go here it's gonna be on the back side of this separator that'll protect all the wires we can put any excess wire we've got over here and then we will come over on the top side by the switch and go over to this wiring here and we'll use a little bit of hot melt glue to make sure it stays here so it doesn't get down into this moving area with the wheel okay so now we've got our wiring going from here the positive goes to the switch the negative just keeps going over and we're soldered to the 24 volt inputs for our DC to DC converter. So this will put out 12 volts to feed the LEDs. So we're ready to button this up. I get the wiring set kind of how it needs to go. Any excess we can bundle in this compartment. Make sure the switch is off because we're going to put the fuse in it now. So if that switch gets hit on and that's you know both touching the frame or something like that it'll it'll spark and it'll pop that fuse. Anyway I'm going to get ready to button it up. Okay, hopefully you can see how I've got this compartment. I'm getting ready to put it in and I've just pulled all the wires, all the excess wire over into there. And then we're going to hot melt, just put a few sticky spots over here to hold it uh, once we get this side bolted on. Okay, now from this angle you can see the wires. You see the turning. We're hitting over here. So what we'll do is we'll use our hot melt glue gun and just Put some dabs of uh, plastic to hold those wires up out of the way. Not that big of a deal. We can make any adjustments we need to here on wiring. So with this one side off, we look like we're in actually pretty good shape. So we'll just, I'm not gonna show me doing it, but I'm gonna basically have it glued there. You might even be able to use tie wraps. But we're in good shape. You just don't wanna hit any moving parts from that wheel. As the kids are spinning it around, I think we got pretty good clearance. Okay, hopefully you can see in there, I got pretty good clearance all the way around and no wires hitting. So we are ready to go to get the LEDs mounted. So here's what we have now. We've got two leads coming out, positive and negative. The yellow is positive. Um, 12 volts, and now we're just going to run our LED strips around the crazy cart. Okay, first step is before we attach that, we'll go ahead and remove the adhesive and stick these two front strips on. What I'm trying to do is align the LEDs where they sit at the same height. There you go. And then what we'll do is hot melt glue that piece. Okay, the first thing is to attach the two strips here on the front. A few things, the voltage comes in over here, the power. So I go to the opposite side on the front from this first strip. Then I do the second and I'm trying to get the LED, the actual physical light in the strip, pretty close to this one so the lights look even. And then I use some hot melt glue just right here. I just push that down and drop a dab on it and that'll help secure that, uh, the top of this LED strip. Next step will be soldering. Okay, I got those soldered. Now we'll start hot melt gluing. I've got that wire, I actually ran it up under the two heavier uh, feed lines, feed wires. So the test will be, we ought to be able to flip it on now. Here we go, things are turning on. So now we just gotta get them mounted. So I don't need to do any more soldering, it's just a matter of uh, hot melt gluing now. Okay, doing the hot melt glue, Main thing is make sure you're clean. I wiped it off with a moist, damp cloth and let it dry. You can sand it a little bit. I don't do it on these side parts, but you certainly can. 
it's just a matter of not being shy. And kind of getting the angle you want. I always like it right back just a little bit. But the glue actually holds it surprisingly solid. Whew. It's also very hot. So once I get that, then I just go along and I will... It's hard to do. I'll just drop a little bit of glue on top and then I'll sit it down this spot. critical because you children's feet are going to be right here and so they can pull and tug on the wires if they're not secured pretty pretty well there you go hopefully you can see that i got hot melt glue i just got it pretty much along all the spots that's where their feet will go and then you've got the piece here and now i'll do this next section one quick tip on the back one, what I do is before gluing those wires down, I'll put it where I want and I center the LEDs against the seat and then you have to glue it because you got a dip here. Glue it there and then once that solidifies, now I'm ready just to kind of lay that wire out like that and I'll just drop hot glue on it on both sides. There you have it, it's tricked out. A little night shot in here too. Here they are in the dark of the garage. Okay, Lane, let's race. So I can 